Hello game makers, this is game maker Rob and this episode of the RPG starter kit is going to be covering rooms, uh, layers, the room settings, uh, tiles and auto tiling. So the first thing you're going to need is to create a room and I've called mine uh, RM parent and if you look on the left you should have uh, probably background and one instance layer like a, a circle like this so I'm just going to um, explain to you why we're going to have all of these layers and how they're going to benefit you uh, for the rest of your game um, every room we're going to make is going to be a child of another room we're going to have three templates uh, one for the world one for villages towns that kind of thing and one for dungeons and uh, every other room is going to be a copy of one of those other rooms. Uh, the reason this is going to be good for you is it's going to save you a lot of time because all the settings, all the layers are going to be carried over. And the reason we're going to be using templates rather than just copying uh, a room that we've already made is because when you do make a child room from another room, it's going to copy over all of the instances as well uh, which we might not necessarily want uh, so uh, we're just going to jump into the layers now so background we're going to be using this to display uh, grass on most of the rooms especially for the villages and the world uh, tiles basic this is going to be for any tiles that we want the player to be able to walk over that there isn't grass for example uh, the floors of buildings, uh, roads, that kind of thing. Tiles collision. Uh, we're going to be using, we're going to be checking this layer for any any obstacles. So this layer is going to be mostly blank, apart from things like mountains, water, um, any kind of any kind of obstacle that you don't want the player to walk over. Uh, decoration. So this is for things like beds and flowers, anything we want to be drawn over the basic layer uh, and also over the collision layer, but that we want the player to be able to move over. Uh, this is an instance layer. This is where the player is going to be. So he's going to be drawn above all of these layers. That's one thing I haven't actually explained yet is uh, the order of these layers is important because uh, whatever's on the bottom gets drawn first and whatever is on the top is going to get drawn over everything else so this is why these layers are in the order that they are so the player is going to go on this layer here um, we're not we're not going to make the player persistent so in every room where we want the player to be uh, we're going to add an instance of the player there uh, tiles overheads you can use thing uh, you can use this layer for some cool graphical effects for example uh, walking under archways or for, for my tile set I've got doorways that the player is going to walk under and the final layer is going to be for the battle system the battle object because we want that to draw over everything else just to make sure that we don't have any problems with that okay so uh, the other thing we want to do first is to make sure uh, we have a view enabled for the room before we do that I want to say that uh, I always have my room size at 640 by 480 um, there may be a better room size to use for your own game I'm not going to tell you to use this size or not to it's entirely up to you uh, but you are going to need to have a view enabled um, this is going to uh, allow us to follow the player around it's going to allow us to do screen shake effects and, and, and lots of other cool things as well um, so the way I have my view set up is it's half the width and half the height of the room and then the viewport is doubled again so it just it makes everything twice the size so my 16 by 16 tiles uh, are are zoomed in to 32 by 32 just by this effect um, I think that's it for this bit so 
the way that we are going to make the templates is we're going to right click on our parent room and we're going to create child and this first one is going to be a world template and let's also make a village template and we're also going to make a dungeon template okay so now we're going to create a child of the world template like so and in every layer we're going to need to add a tile set uh, which we'll, we'll put here to create a tile set we're going to need some sprites so i like to separate my tile sets into the different types of rooms so i've got a sprite for the village a sprite for the world map and a sprite for the dungeons um, there's nothing stopping you combining them all or having different kinds of tile sets that's perfectly fine uh, you can have different tile sets in the same room ju just by assigning a different tile set to the different layers um, also you can take advantage of auto tiling if I just go into the world map sprite uh, you can see they're arranged in this fashion this is to take advantage of the auto tiling feature uh, like this so this is from the manual um, you can see the tiles being added to the auto tiler um, the way you do it is uh, once you create the tile set you just click on the tile one by one and they get added uh, it can save you a lot of time by doing this if, if you use auto tiling for doing large areas it's really useful um, so if you know if you are using if you're gonna have a huge world or you make a lot of rooms it can be very useful indeed so let's just create a tile set now so uh, right click on tile sets create tile set I'm gonna call it TS world map like so and we've got to choose the sprite that we want make sure your tile width and tile length are the same as your tile size um, if you're not interested in auto tiling then you don't need to do this next bit uh, if you are just follow along now so we're going to click on auto tiling here and we're going to make three different auto tiling uh, parts of the library which you'll see here um, we're going to use the 16 one that's for top down the 47 is for platformers and the way that I've arranged my tiles I can just click on them in order and they'll get added as you can see one by one that's the first one we're going to rename it to water grass just to denote that it's water surrounding grass and we're going to add another one now and we're going to call this uh, sand grass and one more I'm going to call it water sand Okie doke, awesome. So now we've, we've done that, we can actually assign this to our layers in the room. Okay, so first of all, we're going to do the background layer. So click on background and we're going to need a sprite. So just to show you the sprite I'm going to use, uh, my tile size is 16 by 16 and I've got water here. So the background is going to be purely water. So click on no sprite background water and we want horizontal tile and vertical tile as well uh, the good thing about back about background tiling is say your view starts to move off the edge of the map 
um, all the players are going to see is more water. So you're not going to have any kind of uh, emptiness, any kind of black background um, or whatever color your background is. The only problem with this is when we come to use the auto tiling feature for water, it's going to leave um, a grass edge where we don't want it. Um, I'll show you how to fix that. Uh, there's ways around this, but um, the way that I have the layers set up for movement and all that kind of stuff, uh, this is the way that we're going to need it. If you don't want water to surround your world, then this isn't going to be a problem. Just change it to grass like that. Just bear in mind that um, when a player goes off the edge of the boundary of the room, all he's going to see is grass going on forever and ever and ever. So it's entirely up to you what you do. Just uh, be warned. That's the effect that there's going to be. So now we have a background. Uh, let me just lock all of the layers and then let's go on to uh, the tiles basic. To, and uh, we're going to add some grass first of all. So we need to add the tile set that we just made. So click on this and then TS World. And I just want the basic grass sprite right now. Um, you can change the size of the brush. It goes up to 40. So I can fill the whole room pretty much with one click. Um, but I'm going to change this to, I think, three for now because I've got a small room. Um, there's nothing stopping you making a bigger world map. Just change the width and, and the height here and, and away you go. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to have a small world. That's all I need. So I think I'll start having grass around here. doesn't have to be perfect because the collision layer is going to go over it. I think that'll do. So now we've got that going to lock it go into collision layer uh, why am I locking layers it's just to prevent me from clicking on the wrong layer uh, and making changes that I didn't want to do uh, there's nothing worse than uh, adding like a decoration onto the collision layer and finding out the player can no longer move through the decoration because you made a mistake uh, so collision layer and we want to use auto tiling now so uh, there's two ways to do it you can click on this button here or you can click on libraries and choose one of these so water grass sounds fine for me and I'll change the size to one yeah that'll do and you can see on the edge uh, like if I zoom in you can see this here this effect this is what I was talking about. It's it's because of uh, it's because the background layer is water. If it was grass, it would tile perfectly, but then you have the problem where you can see infinite grass when you get to the edge of the map. So the way we're going to get around this is switch back to oops uh, tiles. And then we're going to click this tile here. It's water. And we're just going to draw over these bits. Oops. Uh, not happy with that bit there. It's better. Don't don't go ahead and and create a huge map right away just just do a small one like me if, if this is your first time making an RPG or you're not quite sure what you're doing just make a small map because you can always change it later on you know it's just a map all the codes gonna work the same uh, moving warps around um, shouldn't be too much of a hassle but uh, don't spend hours making a map because 
you know it's it's probably going to change later on and you, you might want to uh, do things a bit differently so just do it small for now just to learn um let's add some mountains onto the land i, I think i'll have it centralized some going off like that Uh, I think that's it for the collision layer. Now, if we hide everything but the collision layer, you can see all of these black squares. That's where the player is going to be able to move to. It doesn't matter that there's black squares over here in the corners because the player isn't going to be able to get to them right now. Um, I was thinking about doing uh, like an extra, th um, an extra movement example towards the end of the series for example if you want to have a boat to move through water or a dragon to fly over everything um i was going to add that uh maybe in a few weeks a month towards the end of the series uh, but for basic play movement this is a really good way to see where he can and can't move oops <laughs> okay so let's just put everything back on I'm going to lock the collision layer now because I'm done with that. I'm going to open the decoration layer, add the tile set, grab some trees, and just stick them wherever. Uh, one thing I like to do is for the world map, I let the player move through trees, um, but in, in the villages, trees are impassable. So trees go on the collision layer for my villages and you can also add you can grab more than one tile at a time so for example this village is two tiles wide i can click and hold and drag over both of them so i can place it in one go and i also want to add a tower as well like so and i'll stick it over here so i think that's going to be it from my world map uh, i had i've already made a village and a dungeon uh, between recordings I'll, I'm just going to show you them quickly now so here's the village uh, I've used the overhead layer in this a little bit if I just hide it you can see the doorways and the top of the statue is missing uh, and the bottom of the statue is on the collision layer you see it disappearing now so uh, what's going to happen is the player won't be able to move through the base but if he goes behind it and walks underneath the the head the head's going to be above him and the same for the, for the doorways uh, i always use grass as the background for villages and for dungeons i don't really use the background at all i just leave it black and i've just got a simple it's not even really a maze it's just a couple of rooms with a, some corridors and i've got some some stairs to leave and stairs to go down uh i'm not going to really use the downstairs though because i only have one dungeon okay so uh that's it for this episode the next one is going to be regarding player movement uh we'll have a player object uh we'll make sure he can't move on the collision layer We'll get some nice RPG movement going. We're going to make the view, the camera follow the player. And we're also going to cover warping around as well. So I will catch you next time. Bye for now.